everyone welcome back we're um i've been away for for too long from the channel and there have been various reasons for this and um i will explain it in other videos but um i just thought i would say hello welcome you back thank you for subscribing thank you for commenting thank you for following it's been lovely um, to read comments and to start to get to know people. Um, it means a massive amount to me. It's been a, a really tough 12 months, this last 12 months. And um, we lost Luna, um, my lovely Collie. But we have a beautiful rescue um, now living with me called Rosie and she's another Kelpie so Kelpies and Collies have my heart they really do and I found her serendipity again seems to be the case with all my dogs um, she's seven just turned seven and we've been living together for the last eight months eight nine months now and she's really settling in um, and she's just adorable so anyway, it's uh, we've just been in the garden and uh, my garden is, uh, it's not attached to the house. So it's quite common in um, Bedfordshire, which is where I am, to have remote gardens. So in the, mm, this cottage was built in the late 1800s. Um, and around that time, all of the, there was a lot of workers' cottages put up. We've, so there's a little row of these and a little row of some that are, are mid-1800s. Um, and they're kind of going a little V. And the gardens were all uh, originally all one. And it was a, the big garden attached to the manor house or lodge house or whatever it was. And then during World War II, when they carved everything up for Dig for Victory... Um, they they gave everyone an allotment and um, the allotment or the garden that I've ended up with is, is a decent size but you have to go up paths so it's like going for a walk every time you go out um, but at the moment it's so cold it's about minus six out it was minus seven I think it's warming up now the sun's out it's beautiful but oh it's it's bitter um, and all the snow is now, we, we've had, we had a decent um, dump of snow on Sunday night and it caused chaos on Monday because here in Britain we don't do snow very well. And um, so our village has <laughs> lots of hills to get up out of it. We couldn't leave the village because nothing was gritted and the hills were all slidey and everybody was stuck. Fortunately, I didn't have to go anywhere. Um, but we just went up the garden and I came in and thought, I'm freezing cold, I'm going to light the fire. And I have no central heating at the moment because two of my radiators have sprung a leak. So um, it's pretty cold, <laughs> to say the least. I have thermals on. And actually on Monday I was walking around wearing a bobble hat for most of the day while I was working. And um, But you, you know, it's like a little bit like when I was a kid. And um, lots of blankets on the bed. And you just keep warm. It's saving me a fortune at the moment. So I'm going to light the fire and um, get some warmth going in the cottage. I haven't... I'm not working in the barn at the moment. And I will take you around the barn. But at the moment the barn is kind of... It's ended up as a bit of a storage facility. Because it's so cold out there right now. That I'm just bringing things in and taking things back out. And it's all got a bit messy. And there's still some work to do on it. So um, we'll go and have a little tour around the barn. It's only we, but we'll have a little tour around the barn in a little while. Another video for that one. Um, but I just thought that I'd, I'd bring you with me. I've got to make some um, draft excluders for, for a friend. And um, I'm going to do them out of uh, recycled fabrics, which is important to me. Uh, so I thought I'd share with you how to do them. 
but also prove that you really don't need a very a, a very big space. My cottage is quite little, it's a workman's, worker's cottage and I love it, it's cute and it's me. I don't do big spaces very well. Um, but I work on a very big ironing board because there isn't anywhere in here to have a big table. There is in the barn. So when I'm working indoors I work on an ironing board. So I'll show you, but I'm going to light the fire now and, um, and get that cracking and I'll, um, I'll explain a little bit about what's been going on, so bear with me because I'm not going to light it. This fireplace incidentally was the original fireplace. Um, and I was originally going to have a, a, a stove fitted here. I had a lovely big stove in my old cottage. And when I, um, when I came to look at this one, I thought, oh, perfect, I'll have a stove. Excuse me. <laughs> I should have done this first, really, but never mind. Um, and then I discovered that this was actually the original fireplace. It was identified by a, the dad of a friend of mine who used to come here when he was a boy because his sister lived here. And, um, and he was in his 70s when he told me this, so it was a while ago. And he used to come every Sunday and have a bath in a tin bath in front of the fire. And he said, although lots had changed in the cottage, this hadn't. And I, there was no way that I was going to rip the... Um, rip the fire out. So I'm just going to make up a. Whoops! Make up a fire. I've been <laughs> I've been doing a lot of carpentry out the back, so I've got all sorts of bits of offcuts. So my kindling at the moment doesn't look very rustic, just like bits of wood, but it's serving the purpose. And I can't get to my logs because they're covered in snow, and they're all wet. So, let me light this. Oh, I love a fire. There is nothing nicer. Psh, there she goes. It's like having a living, breathing thing in your house that you have to look after and feed, and I like that. So what I'm using at the moment are these compressed logs, and actually, I'm really impressed. <laughs> I didn't, I was, mm, maybe, maybe not. But I, I'm, I really like them, they burn well. So, my poker. This was my Nan's. It's very bendy. And it lives in one of her old flat irons. I have a few of those, they're very handy. So it lives in there. So, there's the fire going. So we lost our beautiful Luna, the collie that features in the little mini stitches that I did um, last Easter. Um, she had head trauma um, as a puppy, which I suspected, but we didn't know. But her behaviour was so um, bizarre at times. And I had suspected that she was having mini seizures, but I wasn't 100% sure. And then she did. Um, and it was unrecoverable. And, uh, and it was heartbreaking. And it took me a good six months before I could come to terms with it properly. Um, and it was around about the time that time that I thought, well, I don't work very well without a dog, I never have. And I'd had six months without one and I was ready um, to share my house with another one. And it was just a bit serendipitous really. I, I, I spotted um, Rosie on the Kelpie Welfare um, Facebook page and just fell in love with her. And there'd been lots and lots of other dogs that I'd seen, they, you know, I get rescue dogs coming up on my feed all the time. And um, she just stole my heart. And I met her and I met her previous owners who could no longer look after her. Um, and 
the rest is history. She moved in and took over my sofa. <laughs> and uh, she's not really left it since. She's a real sofa hog. So when we're in the house, she's generally asleep on the sofa, snoring. Um, when we go out, she's a completely different dog. She's a hunter. Um, but she is just lovely and she's stolen everyone's heart that's met her and she's funny and it's been really nice to see her personality come out and for her to learn to play and do things that she didn't do when she came here so that's been really lovely anyway um so that's the the dog situation um last year was a funny year it and and this year again it, it's been the same it's just been uh, a catching up from Covid I think. I had to spend a lot of time um, promoting classes and getting that back up and running so that um, I could recoup some of the money that we lost during Covid. Um, I spent a lot of time working on the barn and just trying to rejig the house a little bit because my daughter, were, uh, she moved out in um, March, the end of March last this year. In fact, she moved out the day before Rosie arrived, so that was quite good timing. And um, and all of a sudden, I had all this space that I didn't have before. But I haven't quite got to grips with where I want everything yet, so it's all in a little bit in flux. Um, and I've been working a lot in the living room, so I'll I'll show you how I work and you'll see that you really don't need a big space. <laughs> 